cost management. Welcome to your chapter three on cost volume profit analysis. In this first topic, we're going to cover target operating profit. Because this is the first technical chapter of the course, other than the optional kind of recap that happened last week, I uh, want to quickly go over how this course is designed. So you are in this part right here. The videos where they're the short mini lectures, you will also see for each chapter tutorials. Then you'll see how the course builds to assignments, assignment wrap ups, and all of this leads to your term tests. We do this in two parts, uh, one with five chapters for the first term test, and then after that, we'll do it again for another five chapters for the second term test. Now, I also want to highlight how each one of these elements parallels to graduate level accounting. Uh, for example, should you choose CPA, professional education program, these will each help build you towards that. You aren't doing any extra work, any additional work. It's not harder, but what we're doing is avoiding you learning something one way in university and then going on to your graduate level studies and having to learn it another way there. So this course directly parallels and helps kind of bridge that gap so there isn't as much kind of relearning or, you know, jumping off point. All right, let's get into it. An intro to cost volume profit analysis. This is the build the process of building up models that determine the effects on net income of a change in either revenue or cost. When performing cost volume profit analysis, there are a few critical assumptions. All costs are considered either fixed or variable. The cost function is linear, that is, each level of production has the same costs per unit, and that product mix is held consistent throughout the analysis. To put the cost volume profit model into a formula, it is often best to express it in terms of operating income, such that operating income is equal to the unit sales price times quantity sold less the unit variable cost times quantity sold minus fixed costs. So you'll see here, this actually really parallels to what we've seen in a previous course and in our recap module of the contribution margin, right? So all it does is lay this contribution margin out into a formula here, where this first chunk here represents sales. This chunk here represents your variable costs. So really, if we just had this whole first chunk, that would be equal to our contribution margin, less our fixed costs, equals our operating income or net profit. Same thing. All right. So this formula can be used to calculate a target operating income, can be used to calculate a break-even point. Uh, and if the break-even point is selected as a goal, um, you can also calculate operating income off of it um, in order to, to set that to zero. So, you know, Break even is another way of saying operating income is equal to zero. So sometimes um, for these in person classes, uh, sometimes students will ask, hey, do we get a formula sheet? Well, I will tell you that your formula sheet, so first of all, the answer is no um, for our in class exams. For when we're online, yes, it's open book. So sure, you can use your formula, but I, I don't want you to have to leverage that because it's really just your contribution margin statement as listed here. So it's actually quicker if you can internalize and know how to apply this because that's what the examination will be testing is your application of the concepts, not your ability to memorize a formula. Okay, so let's look at an example. A company manufactures widgets and sells them for $6 each. We're back to widgets. Uh, the total variable costs are $2. Total fixed costs for the company are 10000 How many widgets must the company sell to achieve an operating profit of 4000 All right, so to solve this, I'm going to use the formula uh, that we just talked about on the previous slide in order to find out how many widgets the company must sell to achieve an operating profit of 4000 So here, I'm going to say 4000 and I'm going to have this equal to what I'm trying to solve for. So if my sales price is 6x, x is the amount of widgets that I need to sell. 
minus variable costs, which are 2x, two times every widget that I need to sell, minus $10,000 in fixed costs. Those are fixed. Uh, no matter how many widgets I do or do not sell, I'm going to have to pay that $10,000. All right, so now I'm going to have to isolate 4x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 10,000 to either side. So this will be my 4,000 plus my 10,000. And then I'm going to lump up all of my x variables. So I'm going to have this equal to 4x. 6 minus 2 equals 4x. And then I'm going to divide our 14,000. I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So 14,000 divided by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 14,000 divided by 4 equals 3,500. So I have my x is equal to, pardon me, I have my x is equal to 3,500. So I'm going to need to sell 3,500 widgets in order to achieve an operating profit of 4,000. So why contribution margin uh, CVP analysis is useful is because um, if you want to do some sort of sensitivity type analysis, you might um, be tempted to set up a whole bunch of different columns. But if what you really want to know is, you know, how do I get this 4,000? If anything above 4,000 is considered a win for your company for uh, this month, this year, et cetera, then you're like, cool, if I hit 3,500, I know I'm going to hit that. And then every widget above and beyond 3,500, well, we can just look, every widget beyond, so if we sell 3,501, then we would be making a target operating profit of $4,004. So each unit is that, um, is that contribution margin. Alrighty, let's go back. We're now on slide eight. Another way to compute a break even or a target operating profit is to calculate the contribution margin and divide the total fixed costs or fixed costs plus target operating profit in the case that you're not searching for break even by the contribution margin. Uh, for example, then you could have simply used the formula that we have here from slide eight and said, okay, our TOP, our target operating profit is equal to our fixed costs. So simply go is equal to our $10,000 plus our, our $10,000 in variable costs plus our target operating profit. What do we want the bottom line to be of 4,000? and then divide this by our contribution margin, our contribution margin, our sales price minus our variable costs, and this would be $4. And then, so our target operating profit, number of units that we need to sell, would have been equal to 14,000 divided by four, which gives you your 3,500 units, which we saw uh, exactly the same in uh, the previous slide. So um, just really interesting uh, how you can use the same formula and the same you know, building blocks from the contribution margin and just lay it out in slightly uh, different ways or more streamlined ways. All right, now it's your turn. A small business owner approaches you with a business idea and as an aside, can I just tell you that this happens more than you would think. Um, and it's often not like as clean as this, as like they come with all the case facts, but you can pick them apart and come together and solve a lot of really cool problems. Uh, yes, I know I said cool, bear with me. I, I think it's cool. And a lot of you might too, since you're here. Uh, in order to solve problems and add value, provide information. Um, if you're interested, feel free to email me and I'll send you a link uh, to a venture capitalist who's also kind of regarded as a well-known um, like futurist. And he says that accounting and the mindset of accounting uh, is going to be part of the future. So when we see items like, oh, you know, accountants, um, you know, may not have like, uh, you know, as many jobs as there may have been in the past, what they say is like, okay, perhaps bookkeeping, because that can be automated, sure. But how do we put together the building blocks and how do we provide knowledge and how do we understand and interpret items? That is where the power lies. Okay, I'll come back. A small business owner approaches you with a business idea. He would like to manufacture skates for children. He believes he can sell each pair of skates for $80. Each set of skates has a total variable cost of $30, and the business has total fixed costs of 
How many pairs of skates must be sold in order to break even? Is it A, 650, B, 1,734, C, 1,040, or D, 2,600? All right, so let's solve this together. We're looking for break even for this. So not target operating profit, but break even, or another way of saying it, target operating profit equal to zero. So let's take a peek at our fixed costs. Those here are $52,000 uh, divided by our contribution margin. So let us see what our contribution margin is. That is our $80 is what we he believes he can sell them for minus $30 that it will cost to produce each. And so we simply take 52,000 divided by our contribution margin. And we see that we would have to sell, he would have to sell 1,040 skates. Oh, thank goodness. We have 1,040 as one of our responses. So I want to just quickly point out here that when you do see an MCQ, even if it is for a numerical answer, or my advice would be if it is for a, um, uh, a qualitative answer too, hide it. So visually, like I'm right now, imagine me <laughs> visually covering up these responses with my hand and I would find out the answer and then see if one of my answers matches. Or if it's words, I would say, okay, what would like be part of the framework? What would be uh, key items of what I want, want to do? And then go find it. Because I will tell you that when I create, when I select, um, when items are examinable, they will all look pretty good, right? So just a little hint, uh, these little hints should add up um, and, you know, um, and really help you figure out uh, the problem solving throughout all of this as well. All right, great work. You're a third of the way done these videos. Thank you so, so much, and I'll see you in the next one.